Good morning from a beautiful Austin, Texas. We've just come off of some real terrible weather. 30s every day, 20s at night, ice, almost snow. And so it's warmed up enough to where now the cedar's starting to bloom. And that's not beautiful. That's actually awful. So our allergies are terrible, but the sun is out and it is great to be with you today. Today, we're going to start a discussion on unresolved childhood trauma. I have a fantastic guest who is an expert that's going to come in soon for an interview. And today I'm going to set the stage by starting first about how unresolved childhood trauma affects the unfaithful spouse. Now, as we jump into this discussion, it is absolutely imperative that you understand there is never going to be a mindset that says they cheated because their childhood trauma affected them, so lay off or that we're going to excuse away their infidelity or their addiction because of their childhood trauma. That's never going to be the case. However, if we don't understand the way trauma affects us, we miss a critical component of healing. And if you can't address unresolved trauma in both the unfaithful and the betrayed, you miss an opportunity to heal in a significant way, not just for the short term, but for the long term. I'm talking 10, 20, 30 years down the road. And when I talk to people who are in crisis and I talk about how traumatizing infidelity is, it resonates with them, unfaithful or betrayed. It resonates because it's a traumatic event. And trauma is what happens inside of us as of a result of what happens to us. It's critical that we understand the need to address trauma. When I talk to unfaithful and betrayed spouses, and I mention the word trauma and how traumatic infidelity is, it resonates because they understand it. Once you're in the middle of it, you think, man, this is incredibly traumatizing. And if we don't address how unresolved trauma affects us, we start to get into these spirals. Case in point, when an unfaithful spouse has unresolved childhood trauma and the betrayed spouse starts to flood, starts to have a difficult moment and they start to get into a whirlwind where their thoughts are racing, their heartbeat is over 100 beats per minute, they're having a PTSD type response. If the unfaithful has not done work in this area, they will retreat into several different mindsets. And if you understand ego state therapy, we'll call them ego states. But for now, the primitive term is mindsets. And if they haven't done their work, they will retreat into these mindsets that become incredibly destructive and then alienate the betrayed spouse even more. Those mindsets can be a self-focus, a self-protection, and they hide, they retreat, they run away from this moment because they have so much unresolved trauma and now they're having to confront both their trauma and the consequences of their actions and the betrayed wants someone who will be safe and sit in the fire, sit in the pain and listen to them and emote with them and just process, but the unfaithful doesn't because they have all this stuff inside of them, and so they shift, and now they retreat, pull back, the betrayed feels abandoned and isolated and says, how am I ever going to heal from this trauma? I'm going to give you a couple of quick examples, and then some points of truth for each example, and then we'll be done today. But it's critical that you understand these things, and I think that this will be the introduction into some pretty heavy discussion that will translate into some pretty heavy and big healing for both the unfaithful and the betrayed. The first scenario is when an unfaithful spouse or partner grew up with a very critical parent or critical parents. So what happens is, in this moment, the betrayed floods or gets angry and needs to process because not all anger is flooding. But in this example, the betrayed has a dark moment. Well, now the unfaithful who was raised with a critical parent or set of parents spirals into their own self-focus. They spiral into their own self-pity. They will isolate, they will retreat, and then they will flip it onto the betrayed and say, well, this is about you and you made me do it and you're too emotional and I can never make you happy because they don't know how to sit in this moment and be safe for the betrayed. In essence, the unfaithful runs away and 
continues to isolate themselves and it hamstrings the betrayed because the betrayed is like, I'm not trying to condemn you and shame you, but I need you to help me heal because you're the critical vessel of healing besides expert therapists or intensives or other repair work. I need you to be able to help me and you're not. Here's some points of truth. Number one is infidelity is an awful mistake, but the people that commit infidelity are not mistakes as a whole. Another point of truth is you may be wrestling as an unfaithful with incredible feelings of unworthiness and shame, even self-hatred, but you're an adult. You made an adult choice and with adult choices come adult consequences. The best thing that you can do is get healthy to sit and face the music and help the betrayed feel safe and cared for and like you want to do work to heal. Because when you retreat, pull away, you are sending a message that says, you're not important, your feelings aren't important, I don't wanna be safe for you. Yes, I did this terrible atrocity, but you just need to get over it. And if you wanna see a betrayed spouse absolutely want to slash your face off, tell them to just get over it. Another point of truth is you may have been taught that you couldn't make mistakes and that when you did, you were incredibly unworthy and that you had no value. But infidelity is not just a mistake, it's a terrible choice. It is a life-changing choice. But that doesn't mean that your life is over. That doesn't mean that you are unworthy and you don't have to live in a one down situation the rest of your life. But if you don't own it, and if you don't do work to repair your own self-esteem, you can't look to the betrayed spouse to give you self-esteem. You have to do your own work to heal it and repair it. In essence, you may have not felt worthy of love and care and forgiveness, and you may not feel like that right now, but you are worthy as a human being of forgiveness and love and acceptance. However, there are consequences to your actions. Another scenario is when an unfaithful maybe wasn't traumatized, but had some real dysfunctional upbringing. For example, they may have grown up, and this is true for male or female unfaithfuls, as is everything I've said today. They may have grown up not having to take ownership for their behavior. They may have had their behavior excused away or justified, and so they're not used to accountability. They're not used to consequences. They're not used to having to own their stuff. So now infidelity happens and they are masters, male and female, at flipping it around and saying, well, this is your fault. You didn't do what you were supposed to do. I'm entitled. See, they have this dark entitlement. Now, we're not gonna just drop the narcissism card. They can be narcissistic, sure, but until they're evaluated and tested, let's not just call them a narcissist. Let's say that they're being extremely narcissistic, but that narcissism comes from somewhere, some type of trauma, some type of dysfunction internally, and so now they are in a very tough spot. They're not used to having to own their behavior. Now, before we start to feel sorry for them, we have to understand that this is so wired within them, and this is finally a moment, hear this unfaithful, if this is like you, this is finally a moment for you to grow up and to become mature and to accept the fact that this isn't going to just go away. We may not have had to own our behavior when we were young, but we are an adult now, and now we have to be able to be and remain in an adult mindset own our choices, do work, accept accountability, or else we're gonna wake up even further down the road and we're going to be without our spouse or partner and we're going to wonder what just happened. And it might be because we did not own our choices. The truth is this unfaithful is going to have to learn how to accept boundaries and how to accept responsibility and actually learn how to not slip into these deflective, defensive, shaming behaviors that they may have learned when they were young. And let's not be too hard on those behaviors. Those were survival behaviors. I'm not saying, oh, betrayed, Let, get off of them, leave them alone. They learned this when they were young, so you just have to deal with it. Absolutely not. 
But when we understand where this comes from, we can do trauma care, we can do work, and we can begin to help them put a mirror in front of them and realize, hey, this isn't going to work now. You did this when you were young and it was a survival tactic, but it will not keep you safe now. It is only isolating you more and more. Another point of truth is that this unfaithful in this situation may have grown up thinking that they couldn't make a mistake because if they did, the world was going to come to an end. But being human is about making mistakes. And being human is owning our mistakes and receiving forgiveness. But in this case, forgiveness doesn't always mean reconciliation. But until we can repair the damage that we have done, we miss an opportunity to grow up. We miss an opportunity to heal. We miss an opportunity to get healthier for the rest of our life. When we can repair this damage, we can then learn how to be empathetic. We can learn how to be kind and compassionate. We can learn how to not focus on us and we can learn how to care for our inner wounded child while also standing our ground and being safe for the betrayed to process and work through their own pain. Today was some very deep thoughts. As we heal from our trauma, we can be safe for others to heal. This is the start of some communication I'm going to have with you about our unresolved childhood trauma. I promise you, if you can work on this trauma from your childhood, you can actually heal your relationship if both parties are all in. If you will do the work, you'll be happier, you'll be healthier, you will be more whole, and you will respect yourself and love yourself. And if you can respect yourself and love yourself, and if you can repair maybe some really damaged self-esteem, how much more safer and healthier and whole can you be for your partner? See, doing your own work can change your partner's life as well because now they get to experience a whole new, healthier, repaired you that can then help them heal. I hope this has helped you today. I hope you won't give up on your own healing.